A lot of our colleagues have come out guns blazing in their review of the updated Land Cruiser 70 range. But we need to remember that the criticism that this car gets is because this car is old. In fact, this vehicle has been around for close to 40 years now. So comparing this car to its more contemporary rivals would be like comparing the Rolling Stones to Taylor Swift. So I'll tell you right now off the bat, if you're the kind of person that wants fancier door handles, a more updated interior, and even more fancier bits and bobs from a tech perspective, this is not the vehicle for you. Instead, save yourself 100,000 Rand and buy yourself a Fortuner. On the other hand, if you are interested in this kind of car and this kind of appeal tickles your fancy, keep watching. From a styling perspective, this car gives me resto mod vibes, especially the front end because everything else looks very old, but the front end has been updated to look very modern and it does give the car a fresher face. One thing that I must note though is this bonnet. It is huge, but you'll notice that there's a kink over here. And the funny thing is that it does create quite weird proportions for the car as a whole with that kink, but again, I think it adds to the character of the vehicle. Overall, however, the rest of the car is very much the box that we know and love. Sitting inside here is like being in a time warp. It feels like I'm in a brand new vehicle and the year is 1984. From the buttons, to the aircon, to the vents, to the gear switches and even the seats, it feels like I'm in my grandparents' car and I've been transported into the past. And you know what? I actually like it because where else are you going to get a brand new vehicle that feels like a very old car? You really need to be into this kind of thing to like this vehicle. We are now at the perfect place for us to really test what the 79 can do. We are at ADA, this is the facility that we use for a lot of our off-road tests and it's the perfect place to do some light off-roading and a bit more challenging stuff. We're going to start off very simply, I'm going to leave the vehicle in its normal mode. It's on too high at the moment, I'm just going to put it in drive and we're going to go and when it gets a bit more challenging we can engage low range and I don't think we'll really need to even engage the front and rear diffs because this vehicle does have diff lock for both the front and the rear but I don't really feel like rolling a vehicle such as this and getting into trouble with the boss and all that stuff. So let's do some light off-roading. Yeah, let's set off. So first impressions, you can see why this is a chassis that works. On the road, this vehicle is going to be bumpy. But when you put it on some uneven surfaces like what we're doing now, you can feel how this chassis has got all the world of experience in doing this. And the vehicle is almost saying to me, come on, buddy, you can do better than that. I'm traveling at a decent speed, roughly 30 and 35 kilometers an hour. And this car is handling going off-road like this with lots of ease. As expected, the 79 really dominates. This is where you see that the 2.8 diesel engine that they've taken from the Hilux works like a peach in this car. In my opinion, it absolutely transforms the way this car drives because now you've got a modern drivetrain in an old school feel and it really makes for quite an interesting experience. But I love this engine because 150 kilowatts and 500 newton meters is more than enough power and torque than you'd need for this kind of driving. So for this next bit, I'm going to also engage low range. Now, this is where you see how we are spoilt as modern journalists, because with cars nowadays that have got these kind of features, you just press a button and then the car engages low range. But it's a bit different in this vehicle. I'm actually going into neutral. And then I've got the small gear lever, of which I have to go one back, and then I have to lift. Then it goes into neutral, and I lift one more time, and then it engages low range. So, I'm applying very minimal throttle, very minimal throttle. This car is climbing. Look at that. <laughs> okay, too easy. It's too easy. So now it's going to get a bit more challenging because we've got undulations, we've got a bit of water, and we'll have a bit of flex as well. Once again, the Land Cruiser 79 says, what uphill? 
What undulations? What water? <laughs> Look at that. This is the poster child for traversing Africa. Why would it not be great at doing this? I feel that Toyota has done what many off-road enthusiasts would have wished that Land Rover did. And that is, give us a Land Cruiser that still works on a normal day-to-day -day basis. And they've done that by adding this lovely engine. But at the same time, also give us a Land Cruiser that stays true to the roots of the car. And that is being simple, reliable, and very, very effective. We know that sadly, many of these vehicles that will be bought won't even see gravel road, but that's okay. We love the fact that there are buyers out there that don't buy cars because it makes sense to them, but rather because they love them. And to those people, we really take our hats off to you. I never thought I would have loved a basic Toyota as much as I love that Land Cruiser. But gents, am I the only one? Because I haven't experienced these vehicles in their previous iteration, so I haven't driven the V8. So my first introduction to this car is the one now with this Hilux motor. It's an icon. Yeah. It's been an icon for decades. And this particular shape, although obviously now it's been upgraded, it's been around, what, like 12 years, 14 years? I don't even know, actually. But it's, it's been around a long time. So tell me one thing I need to understand. Those seats and the little bits and the little buttons, does that mean that Toyota keeps these 80s parts just for this car? Because I find it so cool when I touch that like seat, I was transported into my childhood and it was like me rubbing the seats of my grandfather's Chrysler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, right? Like those Look, parts still exist. I, I think maybe they overestimated the, the you know, how long the Cressida would survive and they made all these parts. <laughs> and they have a lot of parts left over, yeah. so they're using them, which True. is, you know, great uh, in terms of uh, cost saving. Mm. But, you know, yeah, people will criticize the car for, for its trim and for these throwback parts. Yeah. The people who buy them, the serious buyers who don't buy them for the look, who actually buy them for farming and for, for game farming or for whatever, overlanding, mm. they don't care what the trim's like. Yeah. As long as it's got an air conditioner, for them it's, if there's too much uh, electronics, that those electronics can break. That's true. So um, yeah, I think the the market that it's aimed at, uh, I actually don't which think I care. Which is the one percent, by the way. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is true. I was fascinated to discover that there's a social standing about this car. Mm. So if you have it, your farm is thriving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the more you have, the better you're doing. Yeah. No, there we go. Yay. But then I, I sort of got to realize the interesting reason. It's not a it's a workhorse, but not in that sense. For instance, so you have a farm. But you, you won't be buying cruisers for the rest of your, your, your people to go and do the duties. This is the boss's car okay. to come and haul you out ah. if you are stuck in the mud somewhere. This is the boss's car to actually grab some of the lambs, take somewhere, you know? Okay. It, it's, it's, it's like a... It's levels it's, to this whole thing. Oh yeah, it's, it's like a breakdown. It's a, it's a social statement as well. When, when it goes out, you say, hey, I've got a cruiser. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. A and at the same time, if you look at corporate, ESCOM uses this car okay. because they have to load power stations at the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the only, only. it's the only thing that can load a power yeah. station. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope that uh, the debate between the new four-cylinder and the V8 sort of subsides because that's a huge one. Uh, yeah. uh, I think you drove the, the 2.8, the yeah. new one. Yeah. Mm. And I loved it. I'm, I'm sure, but I, I, I'm here standing for the guys who want the V8. Mm. You know, there's, some, there's something about driving a pure analog mechanical thing and it's manual you know like yes that you maintain that after minor vibe about it you know <laughs> yes this is but you, you can still get the va you can yes. still get the va yes but not in automatic now that's the interesting yeah. thing manual so, only yeah. what would be the application for that because i feel like the the the, the motor that's in the, the 2.8 is more than enough so if you're getting the v8 is it because do you need that much more torque and power or is it more just bragging rights the 2.8 is more powerful or it's, or it's less powerful by one kilowatt or something. Okay, I can't exactly okay. What it is. 
But uh, the power is very, very similar, and I think torque on the 2.8 is higher than on the V8. Oh, it's, so it's, not about, it's not about power. I think it's all about the sound. Uh, um, uh -huh. You know, if you don't, if you don't mind to, to it sounds uh, good. use 17 liters or 20 liters yes. or 200 <laughs> liters, or 100 kilometers, yeah, get the V8. As far as I'm concerned, eight is greater than four. <laughs>